when lots of people have experiences on bicycles, uh, when they're driving behind you, a lot of times they'll they'll understand who you are and like what you're doing a little bit better. And so even whenever we found ourselves on maybe a little bit more of an industrial, you know, part of the Netherlands or whatever it was, um, I've, I felt pretty pretty well taken care of by the people around me um, for the most part. So yeah. I think that that is like kind of what we're wanting to have is, is for all of us to understand each other whenever uh, we're interacting with each other. And that's and it, especially if I, I kind of can feel it whenever a driver is treating me as if like, oh, like I know what it is like to be on a bike. I'm not going to honk at this person or I'm not going <laughs> to do something. And then sometimes I feel like drivers around me in Denver, they just don't know. So I, I might get upset a little bit, but it really, it's, it comes from ignorance and not, uh, you know, not hostility a lot of times. So yeah. I totally understand that. Hey everyone, welcome to the Active Towns channel. I'm John Zimmerman and that was Jace Davis. Uh, Jace does double duty in the Denver area with the Denver Streets Partnership and also Bicycle Colorado. Uh, Jace actually just came back from a delightful one month long European uh, sabbatical, long vacation. <laughs> he, he had the good fortune of being able to spend a, a month in Europe and uh, he was gracious enough to share uh, some of his stories and some of his photos uh, from that venture, adventure. And I'm so excited to be able to share that conversation I had with him with you. Enjoy. Jace, welcome to the podcast. Thanks for having me. So, Jace, I usually have my guests introduce themselves to the audience. Uh, uh, who is Jace? <laughs> um, I I feel like I'm going to be long winded here, but um, yeah, I'm I'm a, uh, an employee of Bicycle Colorado right now as lead educator, and also work for Denver Streets uh, Partnership as uh, the outreach associate. Um, so, doing lots of cool work in Denver. I don't know if you want me to talk about how I got here or not, but. Yeah, I mean, sure. That I think that's great. Yeah. What, what's kind of your backstory? Are you from the Denver area? I'm actually from Arkansas. Uh, so, and I, I, you know, studied in school to be a mechanical engineer and I got my degree. And as soon as I got it, I was about to get married. I was uh, 10 days from, from getting married and I was driving in, in a vehicle and my wife was driving behind me and it was raining and it was a road I wasn't familiar with. I ended up uh, taking a turn on some gravel and I flipped my car uh, completely over. And um, my, my future wife, my wife now, <laughs> she, uh, she came up to my door and, and got me out of there. And I, I didn't have any huge injuries other than uh, just being kind of in shock. Um, and, and really, I didn't have a job and um, didn't have a vehicle now. And my wife was in grad school at the time. And so, yeah, so I got married and then um, really just kind of um, learned how to get around, just walking and biking around. And um, it led me to read some really cool books like The Happy City and uh, Jess Book's uh, book, uh, Walkability. And I think that's what it's called. Um, and yeah, and so I just really got uh, activated in, and this was in Little Rock, Arkansas at the time, um, in Little Rock, um, just, just by really the, the economics of uh, not being able to afford a car. Um, and, and eventually I decided to apply for an education position um, for the city of Little Rock. They were going to teach a friendly driver program. There's a great guy named John Landowski. He's actually got a, a PhD in, I think, biology. Um, but he's the bike ped person that works for the city in Little Rock. And he gave me uh, the opportunity to teach these classes, which... Um, where um, we had just been uh, the whole curriculum had just been uh, created in Fort Collins. And so we adapted it to Little Rock. Um, I even got John paid for all of us educators to get our LCI training for the League of American Bicyclists. Um, and so, yeah, it's, I really got a great, I shout out to John. He's a great guy. Um, and so he really gave me a lot of tools to use and I, and I loved it. I would work at my engineering job and after my work, I would go and be an educator and I'd be, it would just give me so much energy even after a long day of work. And so uh, fast forwarding to just moving here to Denver, um, I was working an engineering job during COVID. I got laid off and it really allowed me to kind of pursue a lot of my interest. I was a bicycle courier for a while and <laughs> eventually worked my way <laughs> into Bicycle Colorado. Just so I was like, hey, I've, I've got this LCI credit and 
um, and would love to teach classes. So I, I started teaching uh, kids classes for Bicycle Colorado, and that's led me into this year as being the, late, the lead educator for Bicycle Colorado. Nice, nice. So I've, I've got uh, Bicycle Colorado website uh, pulled up here. And uh, again, we just had uh, a peep and Ashwarya on on the podcast uh, just a few episodes ago. Uh, so folks, if you want to learn more about Bicycle Colorado, we go deep into all of that good stuff. But over here under initiatives, you see the uh, education tab and uh, we've got the bike school stuff there. And so, yeah, it's, it's, it, that's exciting, right? I've, I've done the same thing. I, I, I was like the lead educator for um, a, a, an advocacy organization in the state of Hawaii on the island of Hawaii, uh, the big island. And so I was teaching, you know, bike education, safety classes to, to kids. Uh, I think it was always fourth grade, <laughs> mostly fourth grade. And, and uh, so that was good stuff. And, you know, you'd have your, your van and you'd bring all the bikes to, to the school and you're, you're teaching, you know, the skills and all that, but also uh, adults too, helping adults learn, uh, you know, the skills as well. So such a huge, uh, important role for each community to have something like this in terms of being able to teach those skills uh, that are necessary. And in some cases, you know, with some of these kids and some of these adults, you're actually teaching them how to ride, not just safety and not just the, you know, the the skills, but sometimes they, they, they don't even know how to ride yet at all. So uh, I, I can, I can tell just, you know, from your voice that, you know, this is, this is cool. This is special for you. Yeah, I mean, our, our learn to ride program is our bread and butter. As far as our classes, we, we do, um, right now we're doing four to five classes a, a month and um, maybe two thirds of them right now are uh, youth classes, but one third or more than that in some months are adult classes as well. And really, I mean, it's, I mean, it's, it's not, um, you know, people think that they, maybe they should have learned how to ride a bike earlier or whatever, but it's never too late to learn. We have uh, adults that are uh, 60 plus that show up and they still have the childlike joy of like when they get it, it's amazing. And I love that about the job. I love that moment whenever it happens. And a lot of people, they come into the class with so much fear um, and anxiety, but the reality is most people will get it. It might not be in that two hour class, but it'll be pretty soon after. Um, and so I love having that aspect of it. Love and having happy parents, happy kids, happy grandparents. Uh, yeah. So it's a great part of working for Bicycle Colorado. Yeah, yeah. And we, we mentioned this during uh, the episode with uh, Peep and Ashwari as well, is that uh, the bicycle-friendly driver class that's out there, again, that was uh, originally developed by Jamie Gaskill up in, in Fort Collins. And then also, uh, you know, being able to, help provide some confidence uh, to, you know, being able to think about, okay, can I use a bike for commuting? Can I use a bike for those, you know, everyday utilitarian trips? And so expanding the possibility of the bike beyond just recreation. Right. I mean, it's, a bicycle is so, it's has so many uses and especially in Colorado, you can do so much with it. You can climb up mountains and uh, or my personal preference, go to the, go to the grocery store. So yeah, uh, yeah it's so versatile. Um, we're just trying to get people the skills um, that, that really just get out the door and to be able to figure out how fun it is to incorporate the bicycle in your everyday life. Yeah, yeah, no, that's that's fantastic. So, and then you also spend time uh, over at uh, the Denver Streets Partnership as well. So, what are you doing over there with uh, with uh, Jill and the and the rest of the team there at uh, at uh, DSP? Yeah, I'm the outreach associate. So I, I help out with a lot of the events that we do. We do a lot of street activation. Uh, we are have a grant this year to do tactical urbanism. And so uh, I manage a lot of the equipment and also uh, manage the volunteers. So actually, I'm really lucky that I work with volunteers on both both the Bicycle Colorado side and Denver Streets Partnership. And we have an amazing uh, community here in Denver that really shows up to a lot of our events and really is the power that, that speaks to uh, city leaders uh, is is all of our community advocates that that show up at our events and then show up in their community meetings and um, yeah so I, I really just try to, to help those events happen and and coordinate the things that I can and um, yeah we're I, I, I'm I'm the only one at bicycle Colorado that has a, a, a vehicle like a company vehicle so <laughs> I do a lot of the logistics that's, right, that's great right. that's that's the uh, behind all the talk I'm the muscle kind of so that's kind of the funny. <laughs> 
<laughs> yeah, I think uh, I think I saw a uh, a post out on Twitter from you, and it was it looked like it was a van, and it was just packed full of stuff. So I'm assuming that's the the company vehicle you're re- yeah, referencing. That's, yeah, that's the bicycle Colorado van, and yeah. yeah, we pack it full of bikes for our classes, and then for for Denver Streets Partnership, we pack it full of uh, it's tree activating things, so planter boxes and plants and. Uh, hammocks and umbrellas and lots of fun things that we can really change our, our streets to be a lot different than they look right now. So. Yeah, 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 exactly. You know, I think the, in the image there was a bike there, but you know, there's some some cones and some. You know, so yeah, you're just all sorts of paraphernalia and anything anything that you need to be able to to pull pull that uh, street activation or or that you know pilot project or whatever it is you guys are setting up. Uh, we did have a chance to to talk a little bit about. Uh, the streets, Denver streets partnership, uh, in, in peep and Oshwarya's episode, but why don't you just go ahead and take just a, a quick little 30,000 foot uh, overview to, to introduce the audience in case they have not uh, uh, seen that episode yet. Uh, what is the Denver streets partnership all about? Yeah, it's, it's kind of a newer concept. Um, whenever you think about people showing up to ask for, for city funding or to do projects in, in whatever communities they are, they're in, um, a lot of times you have like the bike advocates and the pedestrian advocates and the transit advocates all all vying for uh, the same resources or, or all trying to speak over each other maybe in some places. And in Denver, we have the Denver Streets Partnership to kind of have a coalition of people to say we care about people's needs and uh, we care about uh, people's safety. And, and so that incorporates... Uh, bicycling, um, walking, and and transit riding as is our main focus, and yeah, so it's a coalition, and and we we want to be really broad and say, hey, if you're a person in Denver and and you use uh, your legs or you use wheels, whatever whatever it is, we're we're your advocate. Yeah. Um, yeah. Good stuff. Good stuff. And and I'm not shy about expressing my opinion that I think it's brilliant what you guys have done there uh, in terms of the, the Denver Streets Partnership. It's so hard to keep uh, advocacy nonprofits and organizations healthy for the long haul uh, and, and, you know, year after year after year and, and volunteers. And, and again, I've been in, engaged in this activity for the better part of the last 15 plus years. And uh, I've seen, you know, interest you know rise and wane and and it's just it's really really hard to keep the momentum going and so the broader you can make your tent and the and when you can bring in a coalition and you can draw that line that thread of uh creating streets for people is is something that taps so many different disparate uh seemingly disparate organizations and yet oh yeah there's a natural coalition and a natural alignment with AARP and the American Heart Association and, you know, the, the bicycle, uh, you know, advocates and the, the pedestrian advocates in, and the safe streets people. I, we, we have a, a through line that's all about uh, creating safer, more vibrant, uh, more people oriented public spaces. Right. I completely agree. And it's even if you're primarily a, a, a driver of a vehicle, even then, even most of the times you're going to park it and walk somewhere. So really we're, we're there for everyone. We want to look out for really everyone's needs, regardless of what their personal choices are as well. So. Yeah. Good stuff. So you and I have never met, <laughs> but I had the opportunity to get introduced to you via Twitter uh, <laughs> with this tweet. Uh, it was right after uh, I had published and put the episode out with Peep and Ashwarya. And uh, you're like, oh, great Active Towns interview uh, with two of my Denver uh, comrades. And and it's like, I'm briefly in Paris, my 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 antenna peaked up and I'm like, what? <laughs> this is cool. So uh, tell us a little bit about uh, that little trip that you were on. Uh, you were in Paris on that particular day in June, but uh, where were you before that? Um, yeah, so it was a month long trip. My my wife and I, um, we got the opportunity, my, let me back up, my parents uh, said, hey, we want, we want to go to the UK for 10 days. And we said, well, if if you're buying us all plane tickets, then we want to be there longer. So <laughs> please, please uh, extend our trip. And so uh, I, we asked off from our work places and uh, my wife works in uh, the hospital here at, at Colorado Children's. 
Um, and so we, we were able to take a month, which was amazing. And I know a lot of people don't have that opportunity. So we felt very lucky and we started in uh, Zurich, Switzerland. Um, and it's honestly, we visited so many cities. So I'll just, I'll just say the countries for now. We went through, um, Italy and then Austria and then flew to England, went up to Scotland, went to Ireland and then went to, uh, France and Paris and then Belgium and then the Netherlands. So it was, it was a, uh, it's kind of a, a, a you know, a whirl of a, of a trip. <laughs> Whirlwind, um, I bet. Yeah. <laughs> I'm, I'm still okay, so here, here are the two here. of you are. Where, where, uh, where are we located here? That's uh, Milan. So that was okay. probably, uh, we're just, just kind of getting off jet lag here. And that's, yeah, that's Carly. That's my wife. Uh, I asked her if, if I could use her pictures uh, <laughs> today. And she said, Thank sure. you. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's great. She's amazing. Uh, yeah. So we, we, that we kind of started the trip uh, and, and, Switzerland and then quickly went to Milan. So yeah, that's Milan right there. Fantastic. So I think that, that, that travel is so incredibly important and powerful to be able to experience and see, um, see places. And especially for, uh, those of us who are into urbanism and into uh, trying to transform our built environment uh, here in, in in our cities and in, in North America and really in cities, any car-centric city globally, if you're trying to, to transform that environment, if you have the opportunity to travel and experience places where it's so much better... <laughs> It's I, I find it just invaluable. What are your thoughts having come off of this month long stay there and and obviously have had a little bit of time to, to like let the dust settle and let the jet lag, you know, get past you. Uh, talk a little bit about that from that context. Yeah, I mean, I, I, I think a lot of people sometimes uh, react negatively to it when you come back and talk about it because you can say, well, we're not what whatever city or we're not going to be able to do it the same way and i and i agree uh we're not going to do it the same way but i like to sit on a street or sit at a coffee shop or go to a park and then just think about like what makes this place um so enjoyable and why can't we have a similar type place um in all of our communities back home and a lot of the reasons like it really if you especially when you go to all these different countries that are just so close together you see lots of different things that are way different from country to country, but incorporate just really, really cool ways to create, you know, comfortable streets, quiet cities, um, just things that are just very enjoyable uh, places to be. And it, it makes me just think, hey, we could have this back home. We could have it in Denver. We could even do it better if we had, if we were aspirational enough. Um, and so, yeah, I, I just love that aspect as well of traveling and then seeing cool ideas. We don't have to reinvent the wheel, uh, whenever we do a lot of these, uh, street designs or, uh, whatever it is, zoning or transit. Um, a lot of this is, is done very well in other places and we can even, uh, give it our own flavor, but even do it better if we want to. So, yeah, no. yeah. I know this skyline. <laughs> yeah. What are we looking I'm at here? Picture of Denver. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So what's, what's the, the relevance of this particular view? Yeah, I just I just wanted to throw in a picture of Denver here to kind of um, I was even I was just at my buddy's place. He moved into a place and I was like, oh, you got a, a city view. So I just snapped a picture and then I was sending all these Europe pictures to you. And I thought, you know, I'll just throw a picture of Denver here just to give a little context of uh, who we are in Denver and and just kind of the, the uniqueness that we have. You see the, the downtown skyline and then you kind of see I am in an apartment building. You kind of see yeah. the kind of same level of housing. So really, it's it's very different than a lot of places in Europe where you have. Uh, not many skyscrapers and not many like uh, single family homes. And so, uh, but yeah, there's just, it, it is what it is. And I, I love Denver. Um, yeah. So I, it's, it's really, uh, it's a great city. It's a great weather. Uh, yeah. It's very flat, very bikeable. Um, we, I'm sure we can talk more about that, but. <laughs> well, yeah, it, it's, it, what's interesting too is, is I have a little bit of history here in, in Denver. I, I worked on the 38th floor of one of those towers, uh, you know, for a few years when I was the national wellness program manager for MCI telecommunications way back in the olden days when we, we actually had something called long distance telephone service. <laughs> so I, I would do the commute uh, daily from, or not 
every every day they they gave me a little bit of flexibility on being able to telecommute um, since most most of my operations were national but uh, I would ride the bus down uh, from Boulder to uh, get off at the Market Street station um, and uh, and then either walk or uh, ride the 16th Street shuttle uh, to you know to get to the, the the office there which I believe was at 17th in California and um, but you're right when you look at this this context I love this too because when you look at the, the the height of some of these residential buildings in the foreground here and then you see it framed by the the downtown there in the distance um, we do see a you know quite a nice level of natural density that that does take place not just in Denver in Denver but you know in many cities around North America uh, we actually kind of do have some good bones in, you know, those near, uh, those near first ring suburbs, as we call them, you know, the, the what used to have been uh, and were probably developed uh, back when we still had streetcars, you know, in, in the Denver area and even Boulder had a whole network of streetcars. Um, and so it, I, I love the context of this. And then we slide over and we start taking a look at the context of we see that same sort of height and but it's just much richer. Walk us through this photo. What's what's going on here? Yeah, this is uh, Zurich, Switzerland. And um, yeah, this was our first stop uh, of the trip. And um, yeah, I, I just love the just the natural like natural narrowing of the street and you don't see the, the yellow paint <laughs> and um and really you can just tell that that if if there you know are cars on this they are um they are guests on the street they're not right. uh, the guests of honor as as i was reading in uh the new curbing traffic book i'm reading right now um but yeah i, I think i just i love the just the ability to, to incorporate um you know the flags and you know, the, the activation of, of uh, people on the street and places to eat and just really comfortable to walk. And yeah, the buildings just really kind of uh, caress you in some ways. They kind of make you right. feel safe. They're not towering way above you and they're not, there's not all these gaps and alleyways that like you feel like, oh, what's around the corner? It's kind of a nice, uh, you know, you feel, you feel safer in a, in a weird way to speak yeah, of, just yeah. with the, the scale of it all. Yeah, it's uh, one of my favorite authors in and really one of the luminaries in the area is, is Jan Gale uh, out of Copenhagen. And he talks about, you know, this height of building being still quite human scale. Uh, somebody can be, you know, up to, up to about five, six stories up and go out on a balcony and still be able to make eye contact with somebody down on the street and be able to, you know, have a little conversation there. Anything beyond that, you start getting, it doesn't feel as, uh, as much like it, you're being embraced by the buildings that you're surrounded by, you seem dwarfed by them mm -hmm. to the point where it, you seem insignificant in that realm. And uh, another nice street. Where are we at here? This is Paris. And yeah, I mean, Paris is pretty amazing because almost every street looks like this. Um, <clears throat> and all the buildings are the same color. And that's you know kind of a theme in a lot of these places. You have very, very similar type buildings that really are unique to the areas. And so you kind of instantly recognize uh, where you are in these pictures. Um, yep, we took a walking tour and this is along the tour. We snapped a picture of a few streets. Um, but yeah, I, I love, you know, just, just the, the, it really narrowing the streets. And, and we, I know that Peep kind of mentioned that um, when she was talking about Switzerland, but it really is, it makes a big difference because it really allows people to think, oh, I don't want to drive a huge vehicle uh, if, if I own a vehicle in the city, I'm going to drive something smaller. And so even whenever I'm crossing a street, uh, I remember this several times, and, and there's always going to be people that um, behave in the ways I don't want to. But even then, I, I don't feel like it's a huge truck that's bearing down on me. I think it, I, I have a little bit more um, power <laughs> to be like, hey, uh, let's make eye contact. And, and even I don't feel as threatened, even if even if there is a power dynamic there as well. But yeah, but yeah I, I love those narrow streets and how that that really shapes people's decisions on what they decide to drive around. Yeah. And I, and I love, you know, focusing in a little bit on the uh, the details, the fine details. You'll see that this is a cobblestone street and and that helps to reinforce uh, through that vibration and the friction and, and the noise that comes back, you know, and reverberating up through the motor vehicle uh, to 
remind the motor vehicle driver, oh, that's right. I'm, I'm in an environment here that where I need to slow down. So it's good stuff. Nice detail. Okay. Where are we at now? <laughs> yeah. I think this is also Paris. This was just all on that same walking tour, but I love the, the concrete uh, uh, volumes here and, and just the, you know, just how you, you feel like you're, you're supposed to be there on the sidewalk. You don't feel like it was an afterthought to put you there. So I remember loving the greenery here and it was, it was raining several times we were in Paris, but people were out here on this day painting. That's what they're doing on the side there. So it was just yeah. a street where artists come out and paint is kind of a, yeah. Yeah. T- take a look at this folks. Yeah. I mean, literally <laughs> people are just off to the side of the street painting, you know, obviously, or who knows? I'm, I'm not sure. I, I was about to say, obviously a, a class, but who knows? Maybe it's a whole bunch of, maybe it's a painting club and they're like, Hey, let's go, let's go practice, you know, and, and frame this particular building here. That's got the Ivy growing on it and whatever. So it's fantastic. And I do love this. I mean, I, I just finished an episode with, with Rob Spiller, uh, the former director of transportation for the city of Austin. And we had a little bit of a discussion about the importance of having uh, significant bollards, which really help to do a couple different things. It, it does help to, to slow the traffic down, but it also helps to uh, give true protection uh, and in delineation of space, you know, being able to help protect the, you know, the people who are walking and cycling in the area. But, uh, but then also in this context, I think they're also there to help prevent uh, motor vehicle drivers from parking their vehicles there. So good stuff. Yeah. Right. All right. Yeah. So uh, you have a, a couple of uh, videos that that you've sent my way. I'm going to hold those hold off on those for for a moment. Um, but uh, going back to um, you know sort of that debrief, <laughs> sort of like okay, culture shock. I'm back home. <laughs> Talk a little bit about that experience. Uh, did it did it just get you uh, even more excited about making a difference there in Denver? Yes, I, I really, I really think that um, the things I loved about about seeing people um, in other countries, uh, you know, I w- we did trains the whole way. We didn't drive a car the whole time, so uh, just seeing normal everyday people utilize trains and streetcars and bicycles and walking, and it was it was not this this thing of like you have to really know what you're doing. You know, you can just be you know everyday person and you just kind of walk out your door and jump on a train or jump on a streetcar, whatever it is, it made me think like, oh, like, you know, I really want to come back and and give as much of these options to people as we possibly can. Um, because it really is is a richness that you can you can have whenever you have options at your front door, uh, going to work or going to uh, the park or wherever, <laughs> wherever you're going on the weekends. Or um, it, it's really, it's really special if you have uh, more options than, than just your car. And so I've, I come back and I feel very excited to just, um, just kind of realize that reality of, of, uh, because there's a lot of good things that are happening in, in Denver right now. Um, we have a kind of an e-bike revolution going on. And I really think a lot of people are kind of realizing like, Oh, like I can, re- it can be really fun to get around. It doesn't have to be, um, stressful or I don't have to sit, uh, you know, and, and stand still traffic if I, if I don't want to. Um, so yeah, I, I, I feel very energized and I, I'm trying not to, to be too energized to my teammates because <laughs> everyone's been working so hard. And so I've been like, Hey, don't let me be, uh, too much, but yeah, I'm, I'm very energized right now. Yeah. It's like, okay, Jace, tone it down a little bit. All right. <laughs> <laughs> so, uh, I wanted to pop over to this, this photo because, uh, you know, I, I, I get the sense that, uh, we've arrived in the Netherlands. Yeah. And it's, it's pretty amazing. I mean, yeah. um, yeah, just just from the get-go and that's not i mean i was posting this picture and there's people from amsterdam thinking like they were posting on there saying well this is just like a small bike facility um, <laughs> there's plenty of like underground storage and <clears throat> but i knew for my for people that back home that yeah. it would be just amazing to see this many bikes in one spot and you can really see like like how <laughs> more efficient uh, bike parking is than like a parking lot back home where you just have a few vehicles in that same area. Yeah. You can store hundreds and hundreds of bikes in a, a small area and it doesn't, it feels like, wow, like I feel like this is a good use of space and it's serving lots of people. So yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Pretty amazing. 
And what's great too is is I love the fact that uh, you you gave uh, Jason with not just bikes a a nice little shout out here in, in that uh, Jason's a good friend and and I'm honored to have him on the the podcast a couple of different times and so uh, partners in crime in the sense that we're we're trying to push this message out uh, in. In, on YouTube, and it's been so amazing and, and so gratifying to see how much his channel has just absolutely blown up. So, you know, love the fact that you gave him a shout out on that. And, and yes, for anybody uh, watching this or listening to this, uh, if you haven't uh, discovered Not Just Bikes as a YouTube channel, <laughs> pop on over there. It is absolutely amazing. Some of the stuff that he has out there and he has a great story. So you can tune into to my yeah, two episodes I, with him. I, lo- and- I love Jason. I, I watched your episodes and um, yeah. yeah, I love it. He's just such a normal guy that just, yeah. but can just deadpan just things that are, he's so funny with his videos. Um, and <laughs> deadpan yeah, I, is a gr- good way to put it. So I wanted to, <laughs> to focus in on this particular uh, yeah. chill little, little video here. Uh, looks like you, you may have a, a 360 type uh, camera or something like that. A nice wide view. Uh, and, and you're just kind of like chilling out and cruising along. For, for you and your wife, how special was it to, to show up in the Netherlands and then just be able to, to go out and explore like this? I mean, it's, it's so accessible. I think I really love, and you notice just the, the way the bikes are there is a little bit different than the norm um, here in the States. You have really, really comfortable uh, bikes with the, with the seat position um, and the handlebars. Um, and then just, just the ability to go wherever you want. I can make a wrong turn in Amsterdam and be like, oh no, like it's not gonna, I don't have to backtrack. I can just find my way because there's a bike path like this um, um, almost, everyone, almost on every street. And it's, yeah. for my Denver people, it's like the Cherry Creek uh, bike trail on like almost every street. And yeah. so uh, it's pretty it's pretty awesome. And we we ended up even grabbing a tandem bike and going to um, going to the beach one day in uh, from Harlem. And it was yeah. it was a lot of fun. It was it's you know one thing that's really cool um, when you're when you're signaling here in the states, and most of the time you're signaling to cars, so you have to be very aggressive and really yeah. like put your arms out and like yeah. you know really really just be a force when you're signaling in the Netherlands, you're really most of the time signaling to all the bikes behind you. So you yeah. have your hands a little bit lower. It's a lot more subtle. Uh, and so, yeah, it's, it's a way different feel for yeah. sure. Yeah. In fact, if you, if you do the, uh, you know, the, the aggressive signaling, you're, you're likely to hit somebody. <laughs> it's like, right. no, no, no. We're, we just do a little finger. Yeah. We're going this way or <laughs> we're going that way. <laughs> so that's good stuff and and what i love too about the that little those little video clips uh of you guys uh driving or you know riding out to some of the cool stuff like the the windmills and 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 that sort of stuff is it clearly you're getting outside of the dense city center and you're able to uh take advantage of what i think is just one of the most extraordinary aspects of throughout the netherlands and now increasingly throughout all of europe is the uh, city to city separated paths uh, and that network. Uh, were you guys just like pinching yourself when you were out there riding on those and you're like able to go from city to city and ever able to go from like from the city to the beach? Yeah, it's it's great infrastructure. And even when it's not, like sometimes, you know, I don't always publicize this, but sometimes you find yourself like, oh, this is a street that uh, maybe it's it's not the best bike facilities or whatever. But I think there there is a tipping point where you get to where when lots of people have experiences on bicycles, uh, when they're driving behind you, a lot of times they'll they'll understand who you are and like what you're doing a little bit better. And so even whenever we found ourselves on maybe a little bit more of an industrial, you know, part of the Netherlands or whatever it was, um, I've, I felt pretty, pretty well taken care of by the people around me. Um, for the most part. So yeah. I think that that is like kind of what we're wanting to have is, is for all of us to understand each other whenever uh, we're interacting with each other. And that's, and it, especially if I, I kind of can feel it whenever a driver is treating me as if like, oh, like I know what it is like to be on a bike. I'm not gonna honk at this person or I'm not gonna <laughs> do something. And then sometimes I feel like drivers around me in Denver, they just don't know. So I, I might get upset a little bit, but it really it's, it comes from ignorance and not, uh, you know, not hostility a lot of times. So yeah. I totally understand that. So here's that tandem. <laughs> yeah. 
<laughs> yeah, that's cool. I wanted to, to to make sure we gave a little love to to the tandem uh, action here. That's that that's fantastic. And uh, this is after you got home, so you're 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 like excited to be back. It, you're excited to be back in the Rome of the Rockies. The Rome of the Rockies. <laughs> that's that's our our Denver. Uh, <laughs> back in the day, that's what we used to try to call ourselves. So uh, ah, I'm trying to bring it back. You fantastic. Know. <laughs> so again, going back to um, you know that transitioning then coming back and that inspiration and the daily, uh, the daily grind of, of like, you know, education and street activations, you know, on, on both within both organizations. Um, what sort of learnings, uh, do you feel like you have brought forward, uh, from this experience and, um, and hopefully, helping uh those of those of your peers <laughs> that didn't have the ability to, to go on that uh you know how have you helped you know transfer that knowledge over in a way that uh, doesn't make them just like roll their eyes and go oh, jace is going on and on again <laughs> i mean i i don't want to be uh, in your face evangelist about this stuff um, but i do want to be a really great resource for people that are interested um, and that's how I feel like Bicycle Colorado is for lots of people. Um, we we pr- produce lots of blogs. And even like yesterday, there was someone on Twitter that was hit. They were hit in a protected bike lane. And they were tweeting about it from the scene. And it just hit me. I was like, I know that uh, Ashwarya had just like put together this great blog. on like the things that unfortunately we have to, you know, publish that, have, you know, things that you should think about whenever you're involved in a, a bicycle crash. And, um, and so I sent that to him and, and it was, it was great. I feel like he post reposted it. And so I feel like that's what we want to be. We want to be resources for people, especially if you're starting out, if you, if you don't know uh, how to use the bus or if you don't know how to put your bike on the bus, um, or if you don't know how to ride a bicycle, even, you know, that's, we're, we're really trying to empower people. So that's where I hope our energy is. And I hope that's how people, um, see us as, as resources, um, to use and to even uh, for the people that are very excited, we want to empower you to be a community advocate in what in your community. Um, and so we we even do at Denver Streets Partnership, we do Advocacy Academy, which is um, a, like an eight week class where we give people tools to to be a community advocate um, and to show up at their their city meetings and. Um, so yeah, so we're trying to take the energy and not be know-it-alls or not, not to say like, Hey, we understand it all. We want to empower people to have options, um, safe options, uh, whenever they're, they're going to work, going to school, wherever they're going. And, um, and then also, uh, yeah, to, to empower them when it, to achieve those things safely. Yep. And here you go. Advocacy Academy. Here it is. And some of the good stuff that has is going on and i think this is important too because it it doesn't behoove um a community to to like have that institutional knowledge just sort of like wrapped up with a, a few uber advocates you know anything that you can do to really again help grow that tent and get as many people uh, educated involved and 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 really sort of understanding so i love it when i see something like that like a, an advocacy academy uh being able to you know really you know help spread that uh that experience and that institutional knowledge it's good stuff so uh, you had mentioned earlier about the, uh, the e-bike uh, program. So I want to uh, just kind of give a little love to that. Uh, this is a post from uh, July 5th. And, uh, you know, cars are so expensive. If we can get more folks onto, e- onto e-bikes, uh, that's more money in their pocket. And they can use that for whatever they need. And it's a win for the environment. And so it's wonderful to see uh, Colorado uh, in Denver, you know, being able to move forward with, uh, the, the e-bike, uh, rebate program and other types of programs too, can very, some very creative programs that are helping get, uh, e-bikes in the hands of, uh, folks that, uh, just, they, they can't even afford a, an e-bike and, and a rebate, you know, it just isn't part of it. So uh, it's really encouraging to see some, you know, Colorado leading the way with that uh, particular initiative. The other nice thing too is seeing the fleets of the bike shares uh, starting to shift over to electric assist as well, uh, because that really helps you know 
I think get more people on on bikes more often, being able to have that. So it's good stuff. Yeah, it makes it a lot more accessible for sure. I mean, and and I'm putting my money where my mouth is because we, my wife and I, we got an e-bike uh, when we got back from our trip, and um, I'm I haven't told my parents this yet, but we sold our car yesterday, so we're down to zero cars and one e-bike, <laughs> and uh, and yeah, so we're um, we're, we're really kind of trying to showcase like what what your your options are and how really um e-bikes are amazing little tools and they can make things a lot more accessible to people especially i'm thinking about my grandparents or my parents um or you know or whoever it is that even like myself whenever i want to get all the way across town and it's 100 degrees it's amazing to have the e-bike to just do that and you don't have to sweat if you don't want to you don't have to work hard uphill if you don't want to and so um, it's not it's it's a lot more exercise than sitting in a car, and it's a lot more fun than sitting in a car. So yeah. all these people, a lot of people, kind of like to like say, "Well, you should be working hard if you're on a bike," but I don't I don't think that that doesn't have to be true. Uh, you can have well, lots and, of fun. And two, you know, true. I mean, if you're if this is a car replacement type of device, this is a a, a functional tool. Uh, did you get a cargo bike? Um, I I have a a like a. I, I posted a little bit on Twitter about this, but I, I have a bike that can carry lots of stuff. So, but I, I, we don't have an e-cargo bike yet. My wife is like, "Oh, well, you need to get one now." So that <laughs> now that I, I went and sold the car, so she's like, "Oh, you should get one." So, but yeah, yeah, we'll see. Um, I, we have a few in the office, and they're they're great tools. Um, and business, or we are we partner with businesses to see if they want to switch uh, over to yeah, yeah. the e-bike cargo bike. So they're they're great. Yeah, it's good stuff. Yeah, we just made the plunge. We uh, uh, went with the the Turn GSD uh, with the Gates, a nice Denver company, uh, mm-hmm. carbon belt drive uh, drivetrain on that. And yeah, what a what a game changer! Being able to carry extremely heavy loads and be able to uh, you know to muscle up some steep hills in our neighborhood. And and again, we our temperature has been ridiculously hot. You know you know, well north of 102, 103, 104, almost every single day. And, uh, it's, it's really made a big, big difference, especially on that grocery store run. <laughs> and, and, you know, I, I consider it, uh, you know, a success because we do still have, uh, an aging motor vehicle that we've had for many, 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 many years. And, uh, I, I dig it when, that thing just sits there and, you know, I save those miles for when I need to do a road trip up to Colorado. Yeah. <laughs> so, <laughs> that's good stuff. Um, what haven't we talked about yet, Jace, that uh, you'd lo- really like to, to share with the audience? Yeah, I, I, in my, off the top of my head, especially with my trip, I, I think I want to highlight um, transit and um, just how, how cool it is to be in a place where I, I didn't speak most of the languages of the countries I was in. And a lot of people are very nice and they help you out, but I was able to understand, uh, transit maps just by walking up to the map and, and looking at schedules and not even be able to read the words on the schedule, but being able to, uh, interpret those maps. And I think that's, that's uncommon, um, in the States and in, in Denver, um, I, it made me think we should do a better job of making things uh, so intuitive. So it'd be hard for me to walk up to a stop here in Denver and understand what was going on. Um, and so, yeah, I, I, I think there's a lot of these these things um, that really, whenever things are clear and, and are easy to use, or let's say like the transit that is really frequent, um, it can be an amazing experience to not even have to look at a schedule and plan your day around uh, a 30 minute frequency bus schedule, you can just pop down and jump on a train every five minutes, whatever it is. So a lot of these things um, that we've been talking about in Denver for a long time, uh, bus rapid transit, and um, and really it would be a great boon to our whole community here. And so in, instead of expanding I-25 here in Denver, we're, t- we're trying to say, hey, we could have 10 bu- bus rapid transits for that same amount of money. It's so expensive to expand the highways. Um, let's let's invest in in the people here and um, and and provide access to places to um, all of our the people in our community. Um, so yeah, that's that's a big yeah. thing that that I wanted to, to mention. Yeah, and I think that it's it's extraordinarily important to to know that uh, what really is magical about um, especially the transit in in the Netherlands is just how integrated. Uh, the transit is with the bikes 
and uh, it, and a lot of people are shocked when they realize that uh, that people don't routinely bring their bike onto the train, you know, onto transit when they you know go there. They'll ride their bike <laughs> to the train station. They'll park their bike. Uh, someone will be outdoor, you know, train or outdoor bike parking like uh, what you show that that photo, and then others are are complicated and beautiful um, uh, indoor garages parking garages for for bikes and uh, they'll jump on the on the train the transit they'll get to their destination they'll jump off they either if this is a regular trip they'll have like another bike parked in that (laughs) in that transit uh, station and and then jump on the bike and go to their 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 destination um and but if not then they the bike share system the ove feats system is integrated with their transit card and so they can jump on uh, an ove feats take off that's their bike for the day and uh you know go about their their business etc bring that bike back to the the transit station uh, when they're done with the day and take off that integration of bike systems and networks with the transit system to me is just it's so i think encouraging i mean i i think north america could do this um even more so than just transit without a bike network because your your ability to walk uh you know from that transit stop to a meaningful destination for most people is going to be like about half a mile about half a mile but you know you're you're looking at a, a radius easily you know if you're jumping on a uh, an electric assist bike share bike you know at a transit station you can get clear across town <laughs> so and and I do and I think about that when I when I think about you know when I when I fly into um, into DIA and jump on the train and get to Union Station I know I can jump on a bicycle electric assist bike and you know get to pretty much any meeting that I might need to do in the downtown Denver area. Um, so talk about that part of it in terms of uh, the development of the, ne- the the actual bike network to be able to help support and, and really support transit in that way. Yeah, I mean, Denver's done um, a, a pretty good job the last uh, even three or four years of, of putting, I think, the the mayor's goal was to put 150 miles of, of bike lanes and uh, <laughs> it, might, it might be a little bit different than that, but it's a pretty big number of bike lanes. And they've even added some uh, protected bike lanes here um, downtown and um, and up, uh, other places around uh, Denver. I think of uh, 13th uh, Ave and 14th Ave. Um, they kind of give a nice little avenue like to go east and west across Denver. And I think we're going to be doing more and more. And, and really that is, if you combine your bicycling with your transit, it makes it so powerful because it does provide so much more accessibility to uh, so many people and allows people to actually <laughs> for it to be to be efficient to to it's almost more efficient to use um, those type of uh, the bike and bus or bike and light rail uh, a lot of times than like bike or riding a car um, into downtown and looking for parking and all this stuff and I think um, we're also uh, really trying to focus on um, on really having storage facilities for bicycles that are safe. And I know bicycle theft has, has been a, a big problem across uh, a lot of places and it's, it's a problem here. And so I think that's, that's another thing that I want to focus on is, is really taking care of people's uh, bikes as well, whenever um, they, they want to go places. And that's something that as a community, we have to kind of really come up and say, Hey, we, we care about uh, everyone's experience on the bicycle. So as our infrastructure gets better, um, we, we need to also think about, okay, let's, let's, let's accommodate, um, some, some good practices to keep bikes safe and, to and to have, make people's <laughs> have a good experience whenever they come downtown to Denver or, or bike to wherever they're going so that they don't uh, bike there and then lose their bike. I, I know that's a big concern for a lot of people here. So I, I wanted to voice that as well. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And, uh, this is, Actually, a post from today, <laughs> so, or, or or maybe it was yesterday, or twelve hours ago. So, um, you, one of the posts that you have pinned uh, to your, your your Twitter account is uh, talking about noise and city noise, and uh, that's also one of the chapters in uh, Chris and Melissa's book, uh, "Curbing Traffic," and talking about city noise. Um, 
I, I realize that this particular photo isn't necessarily uh, <laughs> channeling that, but when I look at this, I, I do think of like, ah, and, 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 and really that concept of cities don't have to be so noisy. Cities aren't inherently noisy. Cars make them noisy. Um, talk a little bit about that, but then also talk about the context of you posting this photo, which is uh, about waterways and how cities can, can do a better job of celebrating their waterways and bringing their waterways forward. Yeah, I mean, I, I've lived in, um, in Little Rock, the Arkansas River goes right uh, through the city. And um, here in Denver, we have the Cherry Creek and the Platte River. And um, it's interesting, like how in all, some places I've, I've been to, and maybe not necessarily those, because there's, there's great, there's the Cherry Creek Trail and Platte River Trail here in, in Denver. And in Little Rock, there's a great uh, river trail that goes along North, Little Rock side and the North Little Rock side that if you, if you haven't bi seen biking, Ar biking in Arkansas is actually pretty, uh, pretty good um, in a lot of places, um, uh, if you can find it. So um, not necessarily these places, but some places they just feel like, oh, um, you know, let's just make a ditch or let's just get the water out of here. And, uh, and you can really make some of these, these waterways or creeks and rivers as features in your city. And that's one thing that uh, Zurich does really well here. They just kind of embrace uh, having clean water and, and showcasing it around town. And I think it does. I mean, you think about Amsterdam as well with their canals. Um, you can use it as, as a calming um, um, city uh, tool. And I think part of that to me is whenever you, you have cars going by a river or cars going, uh, there's really, you know, by a creek or whatever, whatever waterway, there's not much of an incentive to make it uh, a nice, peaceful landscape. Um, you have, um, you know, because if you're in a car, a lot of times you're just zooming through. You don't really care about what's outside your window. You're just trying to get from A to B. And but if you're walking and you're biking and and you're or you're living or working next to these waterways, I think there's a lot more incentives to to make. Uh, these places very enjoyable. So part of that is um, having a walkable, bikeable, uh, enjoyable people city. It really makes these places more attractive inherently, uh, rather than having uh, waterways that we just you know run by in our cars and and don't mind polluting. Um, so yeah. I, I really think being people centered helps us clean up our waters and also just kind of you know showcases more of our cities and makes our cities. And it really you can tell like with the quiet thing. Um, you can you can really feel that energy just kind of bringing everyone's just natural like just enjoyment up and uh, just being able to have a, a nice conversation on the street is is very you don't know, realize how how beneficial it is or how enjoyable that is until uh, you have it and I've never really had that in in Denver or in a lot of places I've been because it's yeah. it's just so loud everywhere. So. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You bring up a really good point too about that difference between. Uh, when that space next to the waterway is occupied by uh, motor vehicles, there you, you, there's that disconnect. You, you're not really connected to that waterway. And I think that's one of the, the most amazing things that uh, took place in Paris um, was being able to activate for people uh, the, through the Paris Plage, um, you know, initiative and, and really, you know, removing those motorways right along the Seine and, and, and turning that over to the people. And so, uh, again, that was one of the extraordinary things that uh, that took place. I think it was started. I want to think either 2014 when I saw it in 2015, it was, uh, it was still just sort of a summer thing. By the time I got to Paris in, in September, it was kind of waning and they were starting to bring it down in terms of the, the number of programming, the activities that were, were right along the river, but still wonderful to be able to, to connect with the waterway. Fantastic. Well, Jace, this has been an absolute pleasure uh, having this opportunity to meet you. And uh, thank you so very much for sharing <laughs> your vacation, your uh, month long uh, sabbatical that you had in Europe uh, with all of us. Thank you so much for joining me on the Active Towns podcast. Appreciate it. Thanks for having me. Thank you all so much for tuning into this episode with Jace Davis with Bicycle Colorado and the Denver Streets Partnership. Uh, I hope you enjoyed it. And if you did, please give it a thumbs up, leave a comment down below and share it with a friend. And if you haven't already done so, I'd be honored to have you subscribe to the Active Towns channel. Uh, just hit the subscription button down below and the notifications uh, bell right next to it. Uh, 
just select your notifications preferences. And if you're enjoying this content and would like to support the Active Towns channel, uh, head on over to patreon.com slash active towns. For as little as a dollar per month, you too can be an Active Towns ambassador. Uh, you get some nice little benefits, including early commercial free access to these videos, as well as a nice discount from the Active Towns store, which you can reach at activetowns.org slash store. <laughs> hey, thank you all so very much for tuning in. Uh, I always appreciate having you along for the ride and whatever support you're able to provide. Until next time, this is John signing off by wishing you much activity, health, and happiness. Cheers.